Ahsoka Tano is easily one of the most well-rounded and engaging characters to come out of Star Wars in the last decade. And with that said, and with her new series set to drop on Disney Plus very soon, it's worth taking a closer look at the former Jedi, especially when there are so many things fans may not know about her. So I'm Gareth from What Culture Star Wars and here are 10 things you never knew about Ahsoka Tano. Number 10. As a baby, she was almost kidnapped by Jedi imposters. Ahsoka was born on the planet Shili. Being an extremely Force-sensitive child, she was discovered quickly by the Jedi. Master Plo Koon discovered the youngling Ahsoka when she was only three, and planned to take her back to the Jedi Temple. However, before she could join the Jedi Order, Ahsoka had an encounter with an imposter Jedi. This person remained unidentified in canon, and was only briefly mentioned in the Ahsoka novel. According to the Clone Wars producer Dave Filoni, the imposter Jedi was planned to be a Zygerian, a feline species. The full story was never written, but Filoni revealed his planned tale at a Star Wars panel. Apparently, the Zygerian, a female bounty hunter named Latrans, planned to kidnap Ahsoka as Force-sensitive children were rare and highly sought after in the galaxy. Her plan was thwarted by Jedi Master Plo Koon when he arrived to retrieve Ahsoka. Who knows, maybe we'll see this story fully fleshed out in canon, perhaps even in her own show one day. Number 9. Her headdress is made from the teeth of a deadly predator. Did you think that blue and white striped coif atop her head was her hair? Silly you! Okay, so did I at one point. They are actually called Montrals, or hair tails. And those tooth-shaped markings along Ahsoka's ridgeline were part of a headdress, like a tiara. And the story behind her headdress is pretty impressive for us non-Force users. First off, Ahsoka is a member of a species called Togruta. The teeth come from a quadruped beast that roams the grasslands of Shili, the Togruta homeworld called the Akul. The Akul are formidable creatures that are quite difficult to take down. Any Togruta who slays an Akul will adorn their head tails or montrals with the animal's teeth. You may notice that Ahsoka wore her Akul tooth headpiece as a Padawan. This means that Ahsoka must have killed one of these Akuls sometime during her childhood. Badass if you ask me. Now what is the coolest alien creature that you've seen in the galaxy far, far away? Let me know in the comments section down below. Number 8. She initially wanted nothing to do with the Rebellion. After the fall of the Republic, Ahsoka did not spring into battle against the newly formed Empire. Instead, she fled to the outer rim of the galaxy, seeking a peaceful planet away from hyperspace lanes and stormtroopers' prying eyes. Indeed, she found a small planet with a farming community and began a new life working as a mechanic. However, the Empire inevitably caught up with Ahsoka on a mining world called Rada. As Ahsoka had grown bored of the agrarian lifestyle before the Empire showed up, she actually seriously considered abandoning the community. However, she had made some ties and decided to stay and help her friends resist Imperial rule. Eventually, Ahsoka ended up meeting with Senator Bail Organa. The Senator hoped that he could recruit Ahsoka, knowing she was a former Jedi. But Ahsoka refused the role of a rebel commander, citing an unwillingness to return to battle after her time in the Clone Wars. You can hardly blame her. But after discovering that the Empire was abducting Force-sensitive children, she finally agreed to join the Rebellion if Organa helped to protect these children. Organa agreed, of course, and Ahsoka ultimately took up her role as a Rebel Intelligence agent rather than a commander. And despite the recent tales of the Jedi show slightly altering a few details here or there, the end result was still the same. Ahsoka initially wasn't all that keen to join another fight. Number 7. She might be the manifestation of a dead force god. During the Clone Wars, Ahsoka, along with Masters Kenobi and Skywalker, journeyed to the planet of Mortis. It was there that she and the other Jedi encountered the force beings referred to as the Daughter, the Son, and the Father. The Daughter represented the force's light side, and the Son served the dark while the father kept his children in balance. Later, Ahsoka was captured by the son and infected with the dark side of the Force. She then engaged Anakin and Obi-Wan in combat, giving the son the upper hand against his family. Then, after Ahsoka was no longer of use to the son, he drained her of her life force, killing her. Jamming. The daughter then sacrificed herself, instructing Anakin to channel her life force into Ahsoka, reviving her. So, does this mean that Ahsoka now has some untold godlike power owing to her connection to the daughter? 
Though we haven't seen any such power manifest through Ahsoka in canon, writers have given us a clue that the daughter is still very much connected to Ahsoka. This is through the daughter's companion, Convo, a bird named Morai. Morai follows Ahsoka through her appearances in canon, showing up in Clone Wars, Rebels, and even in The Mandalorian. There are also clear signs that Morai is no ordinary bird too, as she appears to Ezra in the World Between Worlds and leads him to save Ahsoka from Darth Vader. So keep your eyes peeled for more Morai in Ahsoka, and maybe the show will finally expand on this rather intriguing plot thread. Number 6, she purified a Sith lightsaber to gain her white sabers. The colour of Ahsoka's lightsabers has always been a matter of great intrigue in the Star Wars canon. Initially, her sabers were green, distinguishing her from her master Anakin who wielded a blue saber. After leaving the Jedi Order, Anakin replaces Ahsoka's green crystals with blue ones. Ahsoka then lost her original sabers after the rise of the Empire. Then, when she shows up in Rebels, she has constructed a new pair of sabers, which isn't that surprising. However, what is unusual is that her blades are now pure white in colour. One thing you need to know about lightsaber crystals is that they are basically alive. Crystals have a personal connection with their users. However, when it comes to dark side users, that relationship can be rather abusive. To get their red color, dark siders will actually bleed their crystals. While on Rada, an inquisitor known as the Sixth Brother encountered Ahsoka. Unfortunately for that inquisitor, this wasn't really a fair matchup. Ahsoka easily bested the assassin and retrieved two crystals from his dual bladed lightsaber. Because he had bled the crystals, Ahsoka used her power in the light side to purify and heal them. And through this process, the crystals became pure white. Number 5. Yoda taught Ahsoka a unique form of lightsaber combat. Sometime early in her apprenticeship, Ahsoka began using two lightsabers, a form known as Jarkai. To accomplish this combat style, Ahsoka had to build a second lightsaber. This would be a shorter saber meant to complement her primary one. But in her sparring sessions with Anakin, Ahsoka had a hard time getting used to her second blade. And during one of these sessions, Anakin disarmed Ahsoka while Yoda was watching on. At that point, Yoda decided to intervene because I guess it had been a while since he'd schooled a Padawan. He engaged Ahsoka in a sparring session and was able to easily knock her down twice. He then told her what makes you unique makes you strong. This you must use, yourself you must always be. What does this mean? No freaking clue. But apparently Ahsoka got the message. I think I understand, I need to fight like myself, she responded. The lesson definitely rubbed off as we see by Rebels that Ahsoka is an absolute wrecking ball with her dual-wielded lightsabers. Number 4, Ahsoka was outmatched by Darth Maul but beat him anyway. During Season 7 of The Clone Wars, we see Ahsoka defeat and apprehend the powerful former Sith, Maul. There is a moment in the duel where Ahsoka seems outmatched though, maybe even panicked. Fans picked up on this, and even showrunner Dave Filoni was asked how Ahsoka was able to beat Maul despite her young age. Filoni confirmed that at the time of their duel on Mandalore, Maul was more potent with a lightsaber than Ahsoka. The young Force user had to muster all her skill just to break even with Maul. At one point, Ahsoka realized she was outmatched and had a brief moment of fear. I mean, wouldn't you? However, unlike her master, Ahsoka was able to control her fear, which was the key to defeating Maul. After Maul disarmed Ahsoka of both her lightsabers, the battle seemed lost, but she was patient and, as is always his downfall, Maul was overconfident. After Ahsoka is disarmed, Maul hesitates, not wanting to kill her. Instead, he believes he can turn Ahsoka and use her to defeat Palpatine. Ahsoka then uses the opening to disarm and capture Maul instead, like a boss. Number 3, she probably knew about Anakin and Padme. If you go back and watch The Clone Wars from start to finish, you'll see that Ahsoka understood Anakin better than almost anyone. But she was also extremely close to Padme. Plus, Ahsoka is very smart, so it's impossible to believe that she didn't know what was going on. But if you want proof, just look at her last conversation with Anakin before she leaves the Jedi Order. Ahsoka announces her intention to go, and Anakin stops her outside the temple. He implores her, almost begging not to leave the order. Before she leaves, Anakin tells her that no one knows more than he does how hard it is to live up to the Jedi Code. Presumably, he's referring to his secret marriage with Padme. At this point, they've been married for several years. In a Han Solo-esque response, Ahsoka says simply, I know. There's some debate about what Ahsoka was referring to with this statement. Some fans claim she meant that she knew about his trouble with the Jedi Council, but come on, it was Padme. She knows about Padme, damn it. 
Number two, despite fan speculation, she probably is alive during the Rise of Skywalker. One of the many things that may have disappointed Star Wars fans during the Rise of Skywalker was the blink and you'll miss it Ahsoka cameo. In fact, you don't even see her. You do, however, hear her. She's one of the many Jedi voices giving Rey a spiritual pep talk in her final battle with old zombie Gramps Palpatine. The problem? All the other Jedi during this voiceover are dead, leading fans to assume that Ahsoka is deceased by the time of Rise of Skywalker. Thankfully, Dave Filoni has spoken out to put this fan speculation to rest. There is no reason for us to assume our favourite Force user has shuffled off this mortal coil. Speaking to io9, Filoni said, I remember in The Empire Strikes Back, Luke speaking out through the Force to Leia. Vader also does this at the end of Empire Strikes Back. There's no absoluteness that these people are dead. With that in mind, there's no reason to assume that Ahsoka is dead. She may just have been speaking to Rey through the Force. Number one, she doesn't need a lightsaber to beat your ass. Even for a Jedi, Ahsoka is a skilled fighter and she specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There are several examples of this throughout the canon. First up, we have Cad Bane, a cowboy-looking bounty hunter skilled enough to work for the likes of the Huts. Bane was not someone you mess with, but Ahsoka overpowered him when she was still just a Padawan. Not impressive enough for you? Well, what about the time she single-handedly defeated a group of Mandalorian Secret Service agents? She also whooped an Inquisitor despite not having a pair of her own lightsabers to hand, dodging her way out of trouble before using their own blade against them. Now, if all that doesn't get you excited for the return of Ahsoka Tano in her new show, well then, what is wrong with you? And that's our list. Know of any other things most folks don't know about Ahsoka Tano? Well, let me know about them in the comment section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. I've been Gareth from What Culture Star Wars. Go and check out some more lovely What Culture Star Wars videos on this very channel. Cheers for watching today, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye-bye!